I never really developed an eye for porn. <laughs> I like to say it's some altruistic reason, like it's demeaning to women. Perhaps from a film critic's point of view. The lighting's all wrong. The shadows don't give her vagina the justice it deserves. It's not any of that. It was my mom. It was the summer of my 16th year. I lived in the Central Valley. If you haven't been to the Central Valley during the summertime, it's hot. It's two cats fucking in a wool sock hot. I was doing what most teenagers do during summer break at 10 a.m. I was dreaming. Oh, what a glorious dream it was. I still remember it to this day. Vanna White and I were doing what 16-year-old boys do with a Playboy centerfold. I was abruptly pulled from my slumber by the ringing of the phone. Annoyed, awake, I answered with a groggy, hello. The other in the line erupted with a perky voice of my real life girlfriend. Hey babe, what's up? Before I could answer, she continued in her overly exuberant tone. I can't wait to see you tonight. I know you have to work at 12, so I'll let you get ready. Just wanted to tell you three things. One, I love you. Two, I got something special for us tonight. And three, my parents said I can stay out till two cents. We're going to Visalia for a late movie. I was wide awake after she said she got something special for us tonight. I have no idea what it, wi what it is, but if it has anything to do with the third item, I was fully intrigued. <laughs> we had been planning a night together for over a month, slowly planting seeds with our parents about a film we wanted to see, a film nobody had a desire to learn about or see, including us, <laughs> Meteor Man. <laughs> Since our local theater wasn't playing it, the only option was to drive 45 miles each way. Vicelia was a code for us to go to the river and do what teenagers actually do in a town that's only one mile squared. <laughs> the thought of my girlfriend in the back of my 77 Toyota Corolla not only rose me from my nocturnal state, but arose another part of my anatomy. <laughs> I reached over to the nightstand, pulled out Vanna from her drawer, an errand sock from the floor and a bottle of lotion that I had asked my mom to get me for my dry skin. <laughs> then I remembered. I'm home alone. It's summer and everybody's out of the house. I don't work for another two hours and nothing to do till then. My uniform is clean. All I have to do is shower and get dressed. I'm already naked. Remember how hot I said it was? Like a divining rod, I... I followed my pubescent Peter to the living room, <laughs> carrying my love sock and lotion as I casually placed my, my self-gratification accessories on the floor in front of the couch where I, could, where I would soon perch. I sauntered to the video cabinet where VHS tape, tapes were, had been collected. The right side of the cabinet was filled with home movies, TV recordings of a show my father was going to get around to, and a few store-bought pur uh, purchased tapes, like classics like Octopussy, Lethal Weapon, Shaft, and Die Hard. <laughs> On the left side, under lock and key, was my father's personal movie collection. Recordings of rare weekends when Cinemax was free and soft core, barely clothed interns and nurses reigned supreme after dark. The trick to getting to these tantalizing treasures was simple enough. All I had to do was pull out the drawer next to the locked one and manually turn the latch from the inside. <laughs> Once open, the booty was mine to plunder. <laughs> to my surprise, a new cassette was resting on top. A store-bought wonder. The only one I'd ever seen. The holy grail for a horny 16-year-old boy. Deep throat. <laughs> was scrawled across the cover in gold letters and light purple background. The picture adorned in the cover was a half-naked buxom beauty named Linda Lovelace. Amazed by my discovery, I removed the tape from its case, ejected the standard VHS tape, and inserted Linda in her place. Grabbed the remote, placed myself square between my happy sock and jerkins lotion, <laughs> pressed play, and immediately pressed fast forward. Let's be honest, nobody cares about the dialogue. <laughs> As soon as I got to the first sex scene, I pressed play. My engorged member, fully erect, waited as I liberally applied the lubricant. 
My happy sock at the ready as I commence to take out the four sisters and their fat friend. <laughs> you know, make the bald man puke, flogging Molly, rubbing the lamp, releasing the genie, making the cobra spit. In mid-stroke, the sound of the garage door opening broke through the moans <laughs> and grunts coming from the TV. Since my mom's car was in the shop, it had to be my dad. He was home for lunch, that cheap-ass bastard, <laughs> refusing, to, refusing to pay for a meal when there's perfectly fine leftovers in the fridge. Like a trained ninja, I quickly turned off the video, grabbed the lotion, spun kicked the VHS cabinet closed, did a naked tuck and roll over the couch, and ran to the nearest bathroom. <laughs> just as I learned that, just as I heard the door to the no doorknob from the garage door turn. I turned on the shower and rinsed away any evidence of my self-gratification. From the bathroom, I could hear my dad rummaging in the fridge, looking for remainders of the meatloaf from the night before. I wrapped, <laughs> I wrapped a towel around my waist, walked into the living room and nonchalant, as nonchalant as possible. I waved at my dad <laughs> as he grunted, placing meatloaf between two pieces of white meat while putting chunks of meat into his mouth. I began to leave as he hollered at me to get back to the living room. Through food-filled cheeks, he bent over, retrieved a wayward sock sitting in the middle of the living room, and tossed it to me. For cross sake, boy, pick up after yourself. With sock in hand, I went to my room and got dressed for work. I was scheduled to work from, the, from 12 to 8 at the typical shift during the summer times at the local pizza parlor. About midway through the shift, the delivery phone line rang. Popola's Pizza, the real people's pizza people. How may I help you? Popola's Pizza, the real Adam. It was a voice I knew anywhere. Hey, Mom, what's up? You need to come home now. Mom, I can't. I'm working. I don't care if you're about to perform surgery on the Pope. Get your butt home now. My mom, being a devout Catholic, taking the Holy Father's name in vain may not have been a sin, but it sure as hell means she meant business. I told my manager I had a family emergency at home and I needed to attend to. Driving home, I wondered what had gotten into my mom so fired up. Sure, I didn't do my chores, but that was normal. I was going to do them when I got home before my date. My mind was drawing a blank as to what it was wrong. When I walked in through the front door, my parents were sitting in their usual places. My dad in his Barco lounger, while my mom sat adjacent to him on the couch. They had been in deep conversation, but abruptly stopped when I walked in. My dad had looked at concern on his face. Possibly fear? My mom was furious. Her lips had retreated into her mouth. Her jaw was clenched, and that little stupid vein was pulsating on top of her forehead. I'd only seen that look once before when I got caught cutting class. But it's summer. What could I have done to get her this worked up? Without saying a word, she pointed to an empty spot next to her on the couch. I cautiously walked over and sat next to her. She then looked at my father and nodded. With a heavy sigh, he raised the remote and pressed the button. The TV came to life with Technicolor Wonder and the volume was all the way up, blaring in double, Dolby Stereo. The <laughs> intro music of the video I had attempted to gratify myself to earlier that day echoed off the walls. I quickly shot up to hit the eject button from the VCR. My mom was at the ready. With cat-like reflexes, she reached out, grabbed the back of my work apron, and with Herculean strength, pulled me back to the couch and even closer to her. <laughs> placing a kung fu grip on my leg, pinning me in place as the vi video continued to play. It's not mine, I whined, in an empty attempt to throw my dad under the bus. <laughs> she snapped her neck to the side, glaring at my dad with all the vexation a mother superior breathlessly cared. <laughs> I know. Slightly baring her teeth within that moment. Her head slowly turned back to the screen. This is what you do when we aren't home? fire burning in her eyes and voice. On screen, Linda is spread wide as her partner inserts himself, hammering, her, hammering away over and over again with enthusiastic force. I can't get you to wash the dishes, but you'll watch this filth. 
shaking her head in disappointment. Linda is now on her knees, unzipping her overall, overalls of her co-star. It takes the will of God himself for you to take out the trash, but you'll watch this garbage? Her lips piercing closer together. Linda has, Linda has just realized that the only way she can climax is through fellatio. The dog has messes all over the backyard, but this is the crap you think of? Her grip on my leg tightening. Fun fact. Deep Throat is exactly one hour and two minutes long. <laughs> my mother made me sit with her and my father that night watching the film in its entirety. She never took her eyes off the screen or her hand off my leg. When the film concluded, I was told that I was grounded for the rest of the summer, starting that night. My girlfriend came by over that, later that evening for our special date, only to be informed by my mother that I was prohibited from any form of excitement, including her. <laughs> I was only allowed to leave my room for food and work. At work, I was to call my mother every hour, and she would in turn call me back to verify that I was actually there. I can't look at porn now without my mother's eyes looking back at me asking, <laughs> is this what women are to you? Is this what you think I am? We are vessels for your boy parts? No, mom, I don't think that. At least not since then. Adam Stone!